for the second part of our radiology club. We'll have the signs in radiology presented by our colleague, Dr. Rihan. Good morning. Looking to this image, this is axial T2 weighted image MRI. Uh, anybody see any abnormality in this image? Someone says increasing calvarium thickness. Another one says uh, P2 increased signal intensity in the hippocampus, right? You said? Yes. Uh, this is normal. <coughs> what do you think? It's oh. normal. Look at this uh, image. I think this. So some of your colleagues say this is a panda sign, indicating also disease. Would you agree or not? Yes, totally. Yes. Okay. I want to explain for you. Okay, let's start uh, just uh, anatomy of midbrain. It's somewhat difficult. Uh, we have uh, midbrain is uh, composed of three parts. The most interior one is uh, uh, crust of cerebri. It's here. Then we have tegmentum which uh, contain red nucleus, uh, separated from crust by substantia nigra. And the uh, uh, most posterior one is tegmentum, which uh, contain, tectum, tectum sorry, uh, which contain uh, superior and inferior colliculus. It's posterior to aqueduct. I will talk about panda sign. Uh, here we have uh, panda sign. Uh, it is uh, characteristic for Wilson disease. Also, specific it's specific or not specific for Wilson panda. Sign. It's characteristic. Yes. Not specific. Yeah, in every panda sign means Wilson disease, or there is other differential diagnosis for panda sign. Uh, also, it occurs in other metabolic disease uh, such as late disease. Okay. So uh, mo most of the times it will be due to Wilson. Rarely yes. it might be due to other metabolic, metabolic disease. Yes. Rarely. Uh, we have a face of giant panda sign. Here we can see it. Increased signal intensity in midbrain tegmentum. Here we have tegmentum. With normally hypointense red nucleus. Red nucleus, they are not involved. So they will appear like uh, hypointense. These are eyes of panda. Why is it hypointense red nucleus? They are not involved. Even normally they are hypointense. High point, sorry. Because they contain iron. That's why they are red. Red, because normally they contain iron. They cause red nucleus. And that's why they appear high point on all imaging sequences. Okay? So when they are not involved in Olsen disease, they, remain. they will be high point state. Yes. Uh, also, the uh, preservation of signal intensity of pars reticularis of substantia nigra. Here, uh, uh, parts of reticularis is part of, uh, of substantia nigra. Also, it remains hypointense. They form ears. Nice. Low signal intensity of superior colliculus form chin. Uh, this was in midbrain. We have also face of miniature panda, that's babe of panda, uh, involving pons. So we have giant panda and a small panda. Yes. <laughs> My daughter would say, "Was so cute." <laughs> Continue. Uh, okay. Uh, we have medial uh, hypointense of medial longitudinal fasciculi and tegmental tract forming eyes of panda. Here, I don't think uh, I don't know if it's clear or not. This to hypointense signal. Uh, in contrast with the hyperintense of aqueduct opening into fourth ventricle, forming nose and mouth of the panda. So here, the, the baby, the cub panda, is just this one. Yes. You look just for this one, leave the rest. 
Just segment and part of uh, pawns, not all the pawns. Just segment and part. Yep. Uh, forming nose and mouth of panda, bounded inferiorly by superior medullary velum. The uh, superior uh, cerebellar pedicle forming the panda's cheek. So, if both signs are present, the uh, face of giant panda and uh, a miniature panda or panda cup called double panda sign. Yes. Uh, we have other feature of Wilson disease. Uh, Sometimes uh, pawns all will be hyper intense signal, uh, surrounded by hypo intense signal. This is giant panda. Uh, also, we have hyper intense in bilateral basal ganglia and thalami. Here also we have uh, involvement of putamen, posterior limb of inter, uh, capsule and thalami. They are hyper intense. Uh, this is also giant panda. This is miniature of panda. Uh, Sometimes we have uh, hyper intense signal in T1. In basal ganglia. Uh, also, midbrain is hyper intense in T1. Uh, they are written that if we have hyper intense signal in T1, maybe associated with that liver is involving in Wilson disease. Uh, another characteristic feature of Wilson disease, we can see a thin of uh, rim of T2 hyper intense in colostrum known as bright colostrum sign. Uh, on CT, Wilson disease uh, will appear. We have uh, hypo dense signal in midbrain, basal ganglia thalami. Uh, also, there will be uh, diffuse brain atrophy or just frontal and also sometimes cerebellar atrophy. Uh, uh, also, we have here bilateral white matter involving uh, hypo dense signal. <coughs> Uh, talking about panda, panda science also we can see in other disease such as sarcoidosis. Uh, when we, we do centrography, giving gallium 67 citrate, we can find uh, bilateral involvement of parotid and lacrim uh, lacrimal gland superimposed on the normal uptake of nasopharyngeal mucosa. This is normal uptake, this is abnormal uptake. So they uh, together appear this as the panda. Head first. Yes. Of course. Head. Yes. Because I'm just guessing what's this. Okay. So the, patient, the like whole patient looks like a panda now. The parotids and the lacrimals and the nasal With nasal pharyngeal. Yes. Good. This is, uh, what is this? This sarcoidosis. sarcoidosis. Also, we can see here both lacrimal gland involved with parotid and uh, normal uh, nasal pharyngeal uptake. Uh, I have uh, this last image. For sarcoidosis. Okay. As much as possible. Uh, in addition to panda sign, we have also lambda sign that's involving of hilar and mediastinal lymph node. So there's involvement of the hilar and mediastinal lymph nodes. Appear as lambda sign. Lambda sign. In which disease this is? Sarcoidosis. Also in addition sarcoidosis. to panda sign. Good. Thank you.